kind of promote what we're going to be doing. Uh, Egypt, Egypt News Daily or something on the top of the page. Top of the page. What does it say? Egypt Daily News. Yeah, there's a live feed coming from Tahrir Square. So if you can pull that up, let me know when you have that. We'll show the folks what it is. And uh, go to iHeartRadio anywhere you get a telephone signal and you can listen with... Um, Crystal clear digital audio. And it is so easy, even CJ can do it. Yes, it is really very yes. easy. Um, <laughs> and you and there's like a million other stations, but uh, from three to six, we we have uh, we blocked it. You can only listen to WNN 1470. Uh, and if you want to speak with us and you're on TrentoVision.tv, you can just look right above our low faces here where we have uh, the flags of America and Israel. We have the Israeli flag. I may put the Italian flag up there, too, sooner or later. But we put the Israeli flag because I get a lot of email from people that hate Jewish people. So I figured to put the Israeli flag there. Um, it would... Uh, to really inflame yes, their senses. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, it's amazing how many people hate Jewish people just for the sake of hating Jewish people. And from a national security perspective, which is our primary focus, we view Israel as the as one of our uh, one of our aircraft carriers that's stationary in the Mediterranean, in the midst of three hundred and thirty million people, most of whom are enemies, and we have an outpost there that um, gathers intelligence is the first line of defense against terrorism in the United States, and uh, we thank Israel for playing that role. So for no other reason than, than your safety and security in your backyard, but if you're a human being, um, we find it very difficult why, uh, why you have this categorical hatred for a group of people that are minute. And um, but if you're a, a person who hates Jewish people, give us a call. We'll uh, we'll talk. We talk to anybody here. Eight 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 five six five fourteen seventy. Or if you love Jewish people, uh, I happen to be a Christian, and uh, I have a um, a love for Israel and Jewish people on many many levels. And I'd be glad to discuss that uh, any time of the day, week, month, or year. Let me know when we're in Tahrir Square. Uh, Tahrir Square is the... Um, it's kind of the Times Square yeah, of uh, Cairo. Yeah, that's a good way of looking at it, Central Park. Or time, make it the Times Square. It's the center of Cairo. And in Feb January, February of last year, 2011, that's where uh, Hosni Mubarak, dictator but friend of the United States, dictator. That's good. Um, that's a good shot. Uh, was overthrown. Well, we got the same thing going on right now in uh, wild and wacky Egypt. Uh, it's, except it's not the same. No, it <laughs> isn't. Um, because, uh, well, I hear sirens. The, uh, the
genocide president of Egypt declared himself Pharaoh. <laughs> he actually declared himself a supreme ruler, but only temporarily, only until he got all his guys in place. Well, there's been a backlash, uh, and, and the noise you are hearing, we tuned, turned it down a little bit, is uh, a crowd, thousands and thousands of people protesting what the Muslim Brotherhood is doing. Now, this is very bizarre, and most likely this whole thing will burn itself out, and the Brotherhood will maintain control, uh, because they see this as their manifest destiny of their time to launch their, uh, their, uh, their, their ability, their, their mechanisms, their processes, their people, their machinery, to establish, at least in the Middle East, a quasi-caliphate, a ruling body of uh, Muslims coming together. We're going to talk about this in detail in the third hour. We're on for three hours. Three to four, four to five, five to six. Five to six hour, we're going to go into detail into what the heck is going on, and uh, we will monitor the affairs. Right now, it doesn't look like the police are clashing with anybody. This is um, a semi- it's almost uh, like a holiday. Yeah, they, they actually um, get bigger, these events, in Egypt in the evening because everybody comes home from work and they go down to the local... Oh, they don't work. Well, they oh, come what, home do they have 70% unemployment or something? That's very, very high, yes. Yeah. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to get into... We'll monitor it, and if something happens, we will uh, break into one of our hours. But the third hour, we're going to tell you all about Egypt. Um, uh, but... We want you to know you can call in. Uh, this is a talk show. We don't usually take a lot of calls because we have all these fabulous people, but uh, we will take calls, 888-565-1470. Uh, and um, we want you to know that uh, we are now providing opportunities for people to participate with us in communicating this great information, and we will do that by having you uh, become one of our sponsors. You can help sponsor the Trento Vision show. Uh, write me a note, Tom, at trentovision.tv. We'll give you all the advertising information. And we will um, uniquely and creatively bring you in as a sponsor to help you promote your stuff, whatever it may be, as long as it passes CJ's approval. <laughs> as long okay. as CJ likes it, you could advertise. As long as you get it, yeah, and um, and you give her free samples of whatever it is. Oh, cool. So uh, <laughs> uh, we were, we are um, soliciting advertising, and uh, and we're promoting, uh, in as part of our program to awaken. Uh, our mission is to uh, to provide the analysis of the Obama administration so that you, the, the patriotic American citizen, understand the uh, deadly direction that this administration is going, not only in the economic world, not only in the, um, the domestic world, but in the foreign policy world also. So we are here, we are the watchdogs of President Obama. He won, he won, uh, I can't say fairly yet, but he won. And um, we're here to make sure that uh, uh, we minimize the damage that he and his minions intend to do in the United States of America by providing solid information for all of our listeners and viewers to act upon. We're an activism, advocacy, radio, television Entity, you got that? Okay. So we do it all. We do wow. it all, and um, let me see. I'm actually going to try to follow our schedule. Okay. Okay. All right. So it's 3:15. So where is so, Peter Feynman? Peter Feynman. Okay. Wake up, America. Who's Peter Feynman? Tell us who Peter Feynman is. <laughs> you tell us who Peter Feynman okay. is. Okay. Peter Feynman is um, a wonderful guy. He's a regular guest on the show. Peter Feynman. F-E-A-M-A-N. But if you have a legal need, he is a 30-year um, Palm Beach attorney. He is the attorney for the United West, our sister organization. He is my personal attorney, Tom Trento, on, on matters I may have, whether whatever they may be. You don't uh, have any matters. I don't have any matters. It no. could be whatever. And um, uh, he is also the, the, uh, the grand poobah for the Republican Party, the committee man, for the state of Florida that represents the Republican Party in Washington, D.C. 
So Peter does it all. He does. He also has a son who is a, a uh, leatherneck. He's a gyrene, a marine. Yep. Went to the academy, went to Annapolis, and is over, um, and Peter has mentioned it on this program, so we can. He's over in the Middle East. He's in the intelligence world. So um, Peter's father was a World War II fighter, bomber pilot. Wow. So Peter's father was in the military. Peter went the academic route mm -hmm. during the 60s and everything. His son has served in Afghanistan. Now he's in the Middle East. And Peter, in his spare time, a couple of years ago, wrote a book that's up on our screen called Wake Up America. And uh, that was uh, waking America up to the Islamic threat, the threat of Sharia, the threat of um, what some people call radical Islam. We don't use those terms here because uh, the doctrines of Islam, when you follow them, uh, they, they are perceived to be radical by the Western mind, but by the Islamic mind, they're... They're <laughs> correct. They're, they're quite from, correct. This they're, is how you do it. <laughs> yeah. The radical view of Islam from an Islamic view is the opposite of uh, what they should be doing, which is establishing um, Islam worldwide with the intent of building a caliphate, a, a one uh, world government controlled by Muslims. I know it sounds like a crazy movie, Go read the book, read the Quran, read the, the, uh, the Hadith, the Sunnah, read the documents. That's what we are experts in. I'm one of the authors of Sharia, the Threat to America, with a bunch of other national security um, analysts and experts. And we have broken the code on this whole thing, the Muslim Brotherhood. Peter wrote a second book entitled The Coming Nightmare. The Next Nightmare. The Next Nightmare. Yeah. And that is the bizarre uh, and, uh, and dangerous uh, alliance between the hard, hard left. The uh, Many of the unions are moving in that direction nowadays, too. It's amazing. The uh, socialist slash Marxist left and the, um, the Islamic world. You would think they'd have nothing in common. But they do. They have well, a common it's enemy. basically how political correctness is going to destroy our country. And they have a common enemy. Yeah. The Constitution of the United the States. The Constitution of the United States is in the way. So, you know what? What? Uh, why don't all these people just go to Egypt, where they don't really <laughs> want to have a Constitution <laughs> anyway? Go to Egypt. Go to Egypt. Yeah. Um, I was... Uh, uh, I don't think I'd be welcome in Egypt or many other Muslim countries so you nowadays. Could probably blend. Yeah, I could. Uh, many people think I'm. Uh, I've got some uh, Arabic uh, blood in me, and I may. Sicily was conquered by the uh, the Muslims at one point, so I'm sure somewhere in the uh, the bloodline. Um, but Jewish people also think I'm Jewish, and Greek people think I'm Greek, and all of that. I'm a I'm a man for all seasons, okay, for all, uh, all nationalities. Oh, there's uh, Sharia, the threat to America, up on the screen. So Peter Feynman, go to Feynman Law, F-E-A-M-A-N-L-A-W.com, Feynman Law. If you need a good mouthpiece, uh, he's our consigliere here at Trento Vision, so he will take care of everything you need. And he's one of us. He's a warrior, this guy, let me tell you. Uh, so. Super smart and, uh, and also a very kind and considerate um, person when dealing with personal matters with people. Yes, he is. And you have worked through the years very closely with him on, on different matters, so you should know. I know some stuff about that. Now, um, Peter's also a political guy. And uh, I, I want the viewers and listeners to... Um, to take a look at or listen to this article that David, uh, David, that Dennis, Dennis Prager. Prager. Uh, who is Dennis Prager? Anybody know who Dennis Prager is? Uh, yeah, uh, I do. Dennis Prager is a swell guy. He is, um, he's a Jewish intellect, yeah. um, an academic, a speaker, writer. Uh, he does it all. He's, he's just a, a brilliant guy based in California, has a, a very successful talk show, radio talk show. And um, I saw him not too long ago, about a month ago. He was in uh, right North, before the election. Yeah, yeah he was North in North Miami, Miami with, yeah. with my buddy John Voigt. Yeah. Uh, I had the opportunity to interview John Voigt at the RNC, Republican National uh, Republican National Committee um, 
con convention, Republican National Convention, all these, all these uh, initials, you can go to theunitedwest.org. We're going to give you a lot of stuff, listeners and viewers. That's why if you're driving in your car and you want to get some of these tidbits of jewels, go to the uh, archives. Go to the United West, theunitedwest.org. And um, we have a, a video window right at the top of the page. And then below that is the video window for the Trento Vision show. But the video window on the top of the United West has about 10 or 12 unbelievable videos. We do a lot of video production. And um, uh, you can go through those, and um, you will see which, which one did I want you to look at, uh, talking about this whole thing. I forgot which one I was going to send the you The article? To. No, the article, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of walk our way through, but okay. I was sending them there for a particular, oh, the, the video on the Muslim Brotherhood is in there, where we predict it... Um, exactly what's going on right now in the Middle East a year and a half ago. So go take a look at that. But Dennis Prager wrote an article. Oh, the John Voight, that's what it was. The John Voight interview I did at the Republican National oh, that Convention. that was so darling. It is, uh, it's in our video window on the United West, and, and John and I play around a little bit. It's kind of a humorous little, uh, yeah. little piece, so you'll, you'll have fun with that. But Prager put this, um, uh, this article out today, and his thesis, the, the headline is, Cuban American, Cuban American vote. The Cuban American vote in Miami explains why America is in decline. Okay? There's a lot in that title. Dennis Prager, who is, look, most Americans just want to get up in the morning, go to work, they're normal people. Do their job, come home, enjoy their families, and uh, kind of build their life and their little business or, or their company they're working in. But there are people that spend all day long thinking about this stuff. Right. And, and thinking in such a way and, and then writing with a skill that gives you insight into what life is about. Dennis Prager is one of those guys. He certainly is. His headline, Cuban American Vote, explains why America is in decline. So his thesis is, America is in decline. So it had to be somewhere to start declining. Right. And uh, he, he says the way, to, way for the average person listening or driving or wherever you are right now to understand this is to look at the Cubans in Miami. And he's 3,000 miles away. But he goes through this, and uh, we'll just go through it for our listeners, just as a thought provoker. That's what this is about right now. He says, if you want to understand why President Obama, this is Dennis Prager writing, uh, in the JewishWorldReview.com, he's a Jewish guy. If you want to understand... He also writes for townhall.com if, you, if he, you prefer to read... Um, Non-Jewish stuff. Non-Jewish <laughs> stuff. Well, Jewish... The Jewish Review has a lot of non-Jewish stuff also, yes, but Town Hall has a lot of, you know, business things, et cetera, too. If you want to understand why President Obama was re-elected despite a largely unsuccessful presidency and almost unprecedented high and continuous uh, unemployment, just look at the Cuban-American vote in Miami. He says, in fact, if you want to understand America today, specifically why why it is in decline. Look at the Cuban America vote in Miami. Okay, it's all coming down to Miami. He said the Wall Street Journal reported that the president captured, this is shocking, 48% of the Cuban American vote in Florida, a record high for a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And I was down there before the election, months before, working with the Cuban American community. I think it's 1.5 million this is not 40 people in a corner. This is one and a half million people who, as many people understand, all came over from Cuba in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. And um, uh, they were historically hardcore Republicans, conservatives. Mm -hmm. And the article goes on. Did you have a chance to read the article? Yeah, I did, yeah. Uh, what, but what that was first generation. That's, that's, explain that. Yeah. Explain that to the people. Yeah, the first generation Cubans were um, primarily Republican and very conservative. Um, according to 
uh, Dennis Prager, he wants to know what is the difference between the current generation and the first generation? Why do we have this trend of Cubans going towards the Democrat Party? And there's two reasons for it that he gives. One, no experience of evil. No, wait, no. The two groups we're talking about are the 60-year-old Cubans and the 30-year-old Cubans. The Cubans who came from the 50s and the 60s mm -hmm. versus the next generation. Their the kids. children, Their kids. The children and grandchildren of those original Cubans. Okay. All right, so the, the kids are voting Democrat. The Why? kids are voting Democrat because they have no experience of evil. The way their parents did, they did not come. They did not flee Castro. They do not understand what communism is, and because they have been educated for the last 20 to 30 years in the United States, they do not understand what the United States is about, and and they have no understanding of American exceptionalism, values, hard work, everything that their parents stood for is completely alien to them. They've had a politically correct education, which prevents them from actually studying real American history by law in some states. And they watch so much television and eat so much garbage <laughs> that they have no idea what's going on in the world at all, and therefore they're Democrats. And, and, and Pretty much. You would think, how could... How could the 20-something, 30-something-year-old kid of the 60-something-year-old Cuban who was in prison, people I was with were in prison, Castro put them in prison as political prisoners, how could they miss so quickly the commitment their parents made and, and, and their, their parents' understanding? Because the kids always think they're smarter than their parents, right? <laughs> well, not only that, because their parents worked so hard. They came here, started with nothing, built their own businesses, built their communities, and tried to give their kids the life that they didn't have where they came from and the opportunities that they never had. And the kids took and took and took and took and have nothing to give back. They're takers. So Prager is saying, and, and we're putting this out for our audience to, to think about, uh, he's saying one way to look at the, the decline of the United States as articulated in this past election, why so many people voted not based upon President John F. Kennedy's uh, dictum that just rings through the halls of history in every nation, ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. That was said January 20th, 1961, and is indelibly implanted in the minds of many patriots even to this day. Prager saying that the generation that just voted in President Obama has reversed that dictum and said, hey, I want to know what this country can do for me. I'm not that interested in knowing what I can do for my country. Right. And Prager uses the, the Cubans in Miami uh, as, as a graphic illustration of the demographic and educational transition to decline. And, and the two reasons, as CJ just said, one is there's no visceral or immediate sense of evil because they came to America, the, the folks, they raised their kids in beautiful Miami, and these kids were sort of privileged in growing up in a safe environment. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you can go to the corner store and get a little job and work and have nice friends. You can't do that in Cuba, 90 miles away. But then he goes on to say the second reason why these kids, 30-year-old, are voting for Obama is because the educational system in America over the past yeah. 30 years has been not only infiltrated, but completely monopolized yeah. by the professors who have a leftist ideology. It's all about leftism and yeah. liberalism, um, which are pretty much no longer indistinguishable. And, um, and, and these ideas, I'm, I'm reading from, from the article, are rooted in large measure in naivete and wishful thinking. The beliefs that people are basically good and that evil regimes can almost always be negotiated with are two such examples. I mean, if that doesn't sum up our national yeah. security policy, I don't know what does. Un unbelievable. And, and the, the, I think the beautiful point of Prager's article is that if Cuban Americans 
who were classically as a block, B-L-O-C, hardcore conservative Republicans, the first generation, 80, 85 percent voting in that direction. If they can lose their kids in one generation to the left, yeah. then how easy is it for folks in any other state in the country to lose their kids to right. the left and that's what's happened right. yeah now the question is how do we win that the back? whole country is right. has lost their kids to the left actually the the country gave them to the left because let's face it the parents really wanted to be doing something else and they gave their children over to the state to be nannied by somebody else yep, yep. so they could go live a different lifestyle and other people could be responsible for raising their children and then put them in front of a television when they came home from school. And 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 that's what you get. That's what you get. That's and what you get from that, from not being engaged with your life and your family. That's what happens. But we are here to reverse that. We believe that uh, America is an exceptional country and and the principles upon which this country was founded developed sustained and uh, and progressed are still true a bunch of people have uh, taken over the asylum one of whom is susan rice we're going to show you something <laughs> with her in a second a bunch of people have taken over the asylum and um, we have a we have an opportunity now all of those listening driving watching we have an opportunity, and I understand the funk that a lot of people are in. Yeah. Still many of my friends are in a funk, uh, uh, a November 7th, 11-7. Uh, it's a long you know, hangover. 9-12 <laughs> was the symbolic date when America was united in patriotism. Well, 11-7 will, will make the symbolic date of, uh, of the decline of America funk that, that conservatives feel. Well, this country is still worth fighting for, and we're on the uh, vanguard, TrentoVision.tv, here at WNN 1470 at 33 minutes past the hour, at a beautiful 75 degrees in our little studio. And uh, let's do our traffic. Uh, Mike, what's the traffic? Not a car driving by. No cars. No cars no on cars? the Highway right now. So, wow. uh, and it's beautiful 79 degrees is in it, yes, downtown Boca Raton. It's a, yeah, it's a nice today. day today. Um, but we are here because we oh, believe... I just saw a truck, oh, though. a truck went by. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, but we, we are firm believers in the, um, the, uh, the unique... Uh, the, the unique value and truth of the principles, the constitutional principles, that they, they ring loudly into the inner ear and brain of, of all Americans. And, but you can, you can cloud this stuff. You can, you can get other nonsensical uh, beliefs in the way of what a, a stripped down constitution mm -hmm. is. We're here to cut through the nonsense, the socialistic nonsense of this president. He's really a doctrinaire Marxist, uh, the president. And we're here to sort through all of that to make you see the crystal clear beauty of this document written 236 years ago and to regain the energy from that and win back America. It's not going to be easy because when you, when you function as Santa Claus, in Washington to dumb people, dumb people will classically vote for gifts as opposed for uh, selfless principles. People are basically selfish, selfish, not selfless. If the government panders to the selfish nature of a human being, then they lock in that vote. We've got to break through that. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. One of which is showing you a Rhodes Scholar a uh, top-notch point guard athlete who rose to the level of the uh, ambassador to the United Nations, who is now being considered <laughs> for um, the Secretary of State. Some people think she has a dead lock on it. She is a FOB, friend of Barack. Her name is? Susan Rice. Susan Rice. And um, Susan had the unfortunate experience on the 16th of September, five days after the attack in Benghazi. Remember Benghazi? 
Well, it's going to be hard to remember because the administration and the mainstream media, now that they're Whisked done... it down the rabbit hole. Yeah, now that they're done with the little week or so uh, sensationalism of the... the um, yeah, those affairs didn't prove interesting enough for anybody, so we'll just let this story go now. I read somewhere, somebody says, uh, the whole affair thing was uh, New Jersey housewives meet, um, you know, the Sopranos meets the... the uh, it was just a mess, that whole deal. Well, some of us say that there's, there's, there's something there, and it's pretty bad. One of the people saying that is um, former uh, extraordinaire prosecutor Andrew McCarthy, one of the Team B authors. He believes that, uh, that when, when this Benghazi scandal is properly analyzed, that the president may be facing impeachment uh, proceedings because of lying um, to the American public and, and uh, uh, other activity he participated in. But today, but on the 16th, to give you the timeline here, 16th of September, that's two months ago, do you believe that? Man. 16th of September, uh, somebody had to say something on the Sunday shows regarding the uh, administration, the White House's view of what the heck happened in Benghazi, Benghazi, remember that? Um, City of Warriors, uh, the, the little town in uh, northwestern Libya was the base of jihadi activity for decades. Um, we had uh, our ambassador, Christopher Stevens, and then uh, three uh, Americans, two, work, two former SEALs working with the agency, and then one working with the uh, State Department, um, S uh, Sean Smith. Uh, we had uh, we lost four people, and a few days later, Susan Rice, the ambassador to the UN, CJ. You you got to do a little explaining to the American public. You're the president of the United States. I just made you the president. Oh no! You got to do a little. Um, you didn't tell me there would be role play. Uh, <laughs> You, you got to do a little explaining to the United States about the security failure of the Department of Defense, the CIA, the Director of National Intelligence, the NSA, um, the State Department, all of that. I mean, you got, we have all of those plus other agencies absolutely failed. You've got to clarify this to the American people, and you pick a basketball player who's the... <laughs> The ambassador to the United Nations. To the United Nations. What was that all about? Um, it was about her future promotion. Okay, that's a very good point. Develop that a little bit, because I think you're onto something there. Well, it was it was about getting Hillary out of the way mm -hmm. and setting up um, Susan Rice to take the flight. You know, go go take one for the team, kid. And after we win the election, which we know, wink, wink, is going to happen. Um, we'll put you in the State Department. And so she said, okay, what do I need to do? And, uh, and, and Barack Hussein Obama said, you know that video thing that we've been floating around since uh, our flags were burned in Cairo? Well, um, that's the cause of everything. And we just need you to go on these five talk shows next Sunday and just say the same thing over and over again until everybody believes that it's true and uh, and then you're off the hook then you can uh no I think you're onto something I think I think the White House got together and said look we got uh, it was a, it was the 16th of September October November so six weeks to the election they said look we don't need a scandal um, now it was uh, a week earlier ten days earlier uh, the third, this was the 15th, two weeks earlier, was the Democratic National Convention in Charlotte, North Carolina. Right. If you remember there, the, the, the narrative, the storyline as to why President Obama should be reelected re was, uh, uh, is dead and uh, is alive, fill in the blank. Right, right. Osama, Osama is dead. Osama is dead, GM is alive. And GM is alive. Yeah. That was the storyline of the yeah. Democrat. So, and, and along that, and then, he, then they would say, Al-Qaeda is decimated. Right. So, on the 16th, which is four, two weeks after the Democratic National Convention, five days after 
the attack in Benghazi, the White House said, look, we don't want a... Al-Qaeda has nothing to do with this. Whatever we say, Al-Qaeda isn't involved because Al-Qaeda has been decimated. We can't have them there. Right. This cannot be a terrorist attack because we're defeating terrorism. We can't lose four Americans six, two weeks after we said everything's great and six weeks before the election. Right. So, so what, do we, what do we hang this thing on? A movie. We hang it on uh, the innocence of Muhammad. That it's not innocence even a movie. of Muslims. But, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, uh, it was complete nonsense. It already had been disproved days before she appeared on the shows. According to the president himself, he said that the following day after the attack, he called it an act of terrorism. Even though he, he said did, that, he it, did say that. Even though he did. Even though he did. Yeah. Um, so uh, the State Department already said already was was getting past the lie. The intelligence community was past the lie. Uh, we already had real-time information proven. The State Department said, we saw the attack in real time. And and still she went out there and peddled so this, this lie. Is this, so what happened, as is very important... And this lady is well, this the is United States Ambassador mm -hmm. to the United Nations. This is not her job, this is not her job. to explain to the American people any of this anyway. This, this is been, like outside. This should have been someone in either the intelligence community speaking on the behalf of the White House. Uh, it, it, the State Department at least is there's a State Department function. It was clearly, they, uh, the Obama administration thought this would be a slam dunk, that they can they can put this whole thing off on that goofy, I, I have a hard time calling it a movie. It was a, it was a, a disjointed series of of cut of shots that made no sense cartoon musings almost. other than yeah. each scene factually people missed this and this has been uh, deconstructed and analyzed the 14 minute uh, trailer which what is the right name that's uh, in a sense, sense of Muslims. Muslims yeah um, the the 14 minute trailer each scene I think there were 60 scenes mm -hmm. Was a was taken directly out of the Quran. Right. So the factual information of the scene, mm -hmm. the information of the scene was factually related to the authenticity of the theology of the Quran. Correct. That's been proven. It's right. just an offense in the Muslim world to to visualize any of this or to say it in a derogatory fa yeah, fashion. They, didn't they call him George or something? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> maybe they didn't like that part. I don't know. Um, well, that's funny how that happened. <laughs> they don't want to use the name Mohammed, so they dubbed right. him George. Yeah. But uh, people have lost sight that this goofy trailer actually was factual. That's another show we'll yeah. do. But let's get back to Susan Rice because she got her little butt kicked today in Washington, D.C., and we want to bring you that information this first hour. So we're on the 16th now of September, and the Obama administration says to Susie, hey, Susie, look, slam dunk, just pawn this thing off on the uh, the movie. There's still a bunch of people upset about that. It's, it's a no-brainer. This is because of the movie Benghazi, and this little thing will go away, and we'll do our investigation, and all of that. Don't say Al-Qaeda, don't say terrorist attack. Stick with the movie. And um, look, added benefit, you are going to be a superstar. You're going to be the person that made sense. We're going to raise mm -hmm. your profile, all of this, perfect time. Hillary's leaving. She already handed in a resignation. She said that um, she wants to. I just, I just remembered something. P.S. to all this with Susan Rice. She was the speaker at um, B'nai Torah in Boca Raton. Oh, Town. my God, you're right. Okay, that um, that synagogue threw out the Jewish protesters against having her speak oh. at their synagogue. So maybe being so close to the election and Susan Rice being somebody they trot out to get the Jewish vote, oh, maybe right. they were putting her out there and saying, you know what, we know they like her down in Boca Raton. Oh. You know, maybe if we put her out there, she'll calm everybody down and they'll believe her even if they're, even if, they think we're a little squishy on Israel. They seem to like her okay, and maybe we'll just put oh. her out there instead. Oh, man. The, the, um, 
the because that was a huge, huge, huge scandal. I mean, they had they had the Palm Beach sheriffs escort people off the property. Him, him. off the property. He uh, got escorted off. You got? Uh, did you? Where? Uh, from Benetora. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah what just, happened? What happened? Uh, we didn't. We we showed up. We got out of the car. And um, they they blocked the door as soon as they saw who we were you were with. Who? Uh, Alan Bergstein, right? With Alan. Yeah. With yeah. Um, hey, if Alan is listening, Alan yeah. Bergstein, we need to talk yeah. to you, Alan Bergstein. If you're listening, yeah. Uh, give us a call eight 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 five six five fourteen seventy. That's and a good I saw point. the whole thing happen because I was actually. Well, I was St. Kaddish at the time, so oh. so I was going there every afternoon, and I had made arrangements to let me come onto the property and make sure I could park and get in to go to the chapel, even though I wasn't going to hear her oh. speech. And they had to make like a special arrangement to get me into the building. So I got to see all this happening. Oh. And I'm, I'm looking around, I'm like, oh, those are my peeps back there. That's a rainy They're day. not was getting it. Rainy? Oh, it was monsooning. Yeah, it was yeah. terrible, yeah. The, the, um, the person you were going to see is the person we're talking about, Susan yeah. Rice. Yeah. And uh, no, I think you. I think the optics. Yeah. The optics of this, putting her out in front. Yeah. Uh, by this uh, politically astute Obama administration had a Jew factor in it. Yeah. Let's let's play off the Jews too. We're putting yeah. you out. We win the Jews. Yeah. We win the Secretary of State. You you are you are the man, Susie. Yeah. Well, uh, Mike. Play Susie on the 16th, and this is a short piece for the, uh, the viewers out there. Um, this is this is Susie at the at one well, of not yet it isn't <laughs> uh, at one of the uh, five Sunday morning shows. Yeah. And then we're gonna tell you what happened today to little Susie. Oh man. What's that song, little Susie? Susie Q. No. Wake up, Wake up a little Susie. Yeah. I can't say okay, it. Got it. All right, here we go. Susie Rice. Madam Ambassador, uh, he says that this is something that's been in the planning stages for months. I understand you have been saying uh, that you think it was spontaneous. Are we not on the same page here? Well, Bob, let me tell you what we understand to be the uh, assessment at present. First of all, very importantly, as you discussed with the president, there is a investigation that the United States government will launch led by the FBI that has begun. Uh, and they're not there. They're not on the ground yet, but they have already begun looking at all sorts of evidence of, of various sorts uh, already available to them and to us, and they will get on the ground and continue the investigation. So we'll want to see the results of that investigation to draw any definitive conclusions. But based on the best information we have to date, what our assessment is as of the present is in fact what it began spontaneously in Benghazi uh, as a reaction to what had transpired some hours earlier in Cairo, where of course, as you know, uh, there was a violent lie, protest outside the embassy yeah. uh, sparked by this uh, hateful video. Um, but soon after that uh, spontaneous protest began outside of our consulate in Benghazi, we believe that it looks like extremist elements, uh, individuals <laughs> joined in that uh, in that effort with heavy weapons uh, of the sort that are unfortunately readily now available uh, in Libya post-revolution, and that it spun from there into something much, much more violent. But you do not agree with him that this was something that had been plotted out we do several not, months we ago? We do not have information at present that leads us to conclude that this was premeditated or pre-planned. Oh, what a lie. Lie. Lie, 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 lie. Keep oh going. Gosh. What was the whole video? Well, that was it? Okay. That was it. Um, no, I thought there was more. Uh, well, she, it could have been from a different show. She goes on to say that... Um, that I'm sure, well, maybe it was another piece I saw, but uh, she was on to say that, and we have to remember that this was um, initiated by the, uh, the uh, Cairo situation and the video and the, the hateful, she calls it a hateful video, so she relates it directly to the video. So she lies substantively a couple of times, factually she lies, and then she relates this whole thing to the video, not on one show, not on two shows, not on three shows, not on four shows, but on five shows, five shows on the 16th 
of September on Sunday. Now, as a result of that, we've later come to know that uh, Petraeus knew it was a terrorist attack when? Right away. And wrote it, wrote it up in the intelligence brief to the White House and said it was a terrorist attack by, <laughs> by a, uh, an Al-Qaeda affiliate, um, uh, uh, Ansar al-Sharia, I believe the name was. Uh, and, and, and that language was in there, terrorist attack, uh, Al-Qaeda affiliate. Well, what did the White House tell her we're, we're surmising before she left for the shows? Don't use the word Al-Qaeda. So she couldn't say Al-Qaeda. So what happened today, to put a, um, a fine point on all of this, over the past couple of weeks, the president, you know, getting a shot of testosterone on the 6th of November, got in his first press conference and saw that uh, McCain and Senator McCain and Senator um, uh, Graham, Graham and from South Carolina yeah. were, uh, were questioning her capability uh, as why she was out there as a UN ambassador dealing with this, why she covered it up, and why, if that's all true, she was simply not even going to be considered to be the Secretary of State. And Obama says to them, don't mess with them, you, you know, uh, you don't mess with her, you mess with me, like a guy in a, in a schoolyard. Well, then what she did, she pulled this pretty smart move where she diplomatically, she's a diplomat, mm -hmm. she diplomatically um, asked Senator McCain and Senator um, Graham and Senator Ayotte, Ayotte, A-Y-O-T-T-E, the mm -hmm. senator from Kansas, I believe, uh, why don't we all sit down and discuss this? And they did this morning at 10 o'clock, mm -hmm. East Coast time. And we all thought that McCain and, uh, and the three senators would come out there going, okay, we understand her now. I watched, they broke in, uh, I was watching the news, they broke in to the um, programming and said, uh, McCain just came out, they're going to the podium, and they were sweaty. They were <laughs> McCain and Graham were sweaty, right? Well, she was there, she being Susan Rice, was in the meeting with the assistant the new interim CIA director, not with Clapper, who's the head of the, uh, the DNI. Um, she was there with uh, the assistant, I forget his name, to the, uh, the interim CIA, CIA director, filling in for Petraeus, and the three senators, and they came out and they said, guess what? We're more worried than ever. They said, uh, this is, and I'm paraphrasing, um, and, and, and it wasn't much different from what I'm paraphrasing. They said, this is a mess. Um, we are not happy with the answers we got. We are not happy with the answers we didn't get. And we have more questions now, and this is not good. And everybody was like stunned, and all three senators spoke for about a minute or two, and then the proverbial question was asked, uh, well, are you going to support her for uh, Secretary of State? And, Two of them didn't even want to answer. Linda Graham comes back and says, "Look, um, I, I, I can't. I don't understand why she was there. She didn't answer our questions today. She's got a mess on her hands. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Nothing else matters at this point, right? How could how can I support somebody to be the Secretary of State when I'm getting no answers right now? Well, we're going to deal with this in the next hour or so. Yeah. And yeah, because there's other Dennis UN, Plager, there's Dennis, other UN issues with her besides this. Besides this, yeah. and the UN is going to be a big issue tomorrow. Dennis Prager, yeah. we led off with his article about Cuban Americans being the graphic illustration of the decline of the United States of America. When you see the ambassador to the United Nations covering up for this administration, you know America is in decline. But guess what? We're here to raise America from the ashes and lead us to a great future. We'll be back in just a few minutes.